News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on this Wednesday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. Teachers across the state are sending a message to Tallahassee this morning. The walk-in they hope will lead to more funding in the classroom. Going to a trampoline park seems like a fun activity for you and your family, right? But there's a certain amount of risk involved. And News 6 investigates the injuries we're seeing there and what's being done about it. Then meeting a 95-year-old expressionist artist with a new exhibit right here in the city beautiful. Why it's called Burn This Down. And a group of students from our area just got a pretty prestigious award. Those kids put together a project showing the importance of journalism. They beat out thousands of kids from across the country. Why they were so successful. And it's time to talk about entertainment news with the celebrities pledging to help rebuild the Notre Dame Cathedral. What fashion moguls are saying about Meghan Markle's pregnancy fashion and the buzz around the new Harry Potter attractions at Universal. We're mixing it up with CJ coming up this hour. Those are big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. RV. Live from News 6 and ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 9. Good morning on this Wednesday. I'm Julie Broughton. Glad you're with us. I'm Candace Campos. And I'm Bridget Ellison. Lots to get to today, and it is Wednesday, so that means we're mixing it up with CJ from Mix 1051. We're talking about, you know, celebrity news, as well as some other big things that have been happening in the news. Of course, that devastating fire at Notre Dame and some of the celebrity support that's pouring in to help rebuild it. Lots of pledges are coming in, and uh, we'll also talk about Meghan Markle. Oh, you know, yeah. we're on baby watch <laughs> oh, yes. as her, so uh, we'll get to that in a little bit later. Yeah, also on Wednesdays, we have Ask a Doctor, where Kirsten, Kirsten O'Connor will be talking with, with a doctor. And this, uh, today, you know, kids have to deal with so much stress nowadays, whether it's in school, it's sometimes their homework. I know I was one of those kids that was always stressing about homework, mm -hmm. but now there's kind of a new movement. It's called a homework therapist. And sometimes they run like two to three hundred dollars an hour, Ooh. but they work as a tutor and a therapist. And we'll kind of dive into that. That's kind of been like kind of a new hot debate online about mm. about how they kind of work with kids. Yeah, I need to get out a notebook and hang on every word that they <laughs> yeah, say when we get to that. Stuff, yeah. And it's the time of the week when we check in with what's going on in our schools. And this week's getting results in our school segment, we had to Winter Park High School where three students there just won an award from C SPAN for a documentary wow, they made nice. about the importance importance of a free press, so we of course love that. And one young woman that we talked to in the story, her name is Ella Grace Rodriguez. She tells us about one person here in New Six who inspired her. Oh, so it's really sweet that. it's coming up. But happening right now, Florida teachers are starting the school day a little differently. They're having walk-ins on school campuses and local districts are looking to get results. News 6 reporter Mark Lehman's live from Brevard County now. Mark, what kind of message do the teachers want to send to lawmakers? Well, it was a message of solidarity out here at Fair Glen Elementary, but it all boils down to funding for education. Here in Florida, teachers are prohibited from going on strike, so instead of a walkout, there are walk-ins happening from South Florida to the Panhandle, and they're hoping lawmakers will take notice. Now, dozens of teachers, parents, and community members gathered early this morning with a message of Fund Our Future. Wearing the color red for education, this walk-in was one of more than 300 happening at schools across the state. It's all part of an effort to support Support more public school funding. Currently, Florida ranks 42nd in the nation for per student spending and 46th for teacher pay. Those gathered here today say that's clearly not good enough. Our politicians can do better for our students and they need to do better because we have high expectations for our children and they need to fund uh, education properly. Right now, budget proposals by the legislature are far apart. The Senate is calling for an increase of $350 per student, while the House is proposing about half of that. Meanwhile, the State Teachers Union says they want to see that number go up by $743 per student. Back out here live this morning, union officials out here were asking supporters to sign a petition they're going to send to the governor. And legislatures only have a few weeks to come up with a compromise. That's when their legislation, their uh, legislative session ends in early May. For now, reporting in Coco, Mark Lehman, getting results, New 6. All right, thank you, Mark. And in Brevard, the union and school board currently are at impasse over teacher pay, and they're set to go before a special magistrate later this month. Yeah, and as Mark mentioned, Florida currently ranks 42nd per student for for 
per student spending and 46th for teacher pay. You know, teachers have the most important jobs yeah. among us, so I know they are wanting to improve that. Yeah, the union says Brevard teachers are being paid below state average, which is, you know, they're such a vital part to yes. the future and with those, for our kids that it's, Something's you know, got to give. Something's mm -hmm. got to give, yeah. The fundraising efforts to restore and rebuild the cathedral at Notre Dame have now stopped, topped at half a billion dollars. And this morning, the rector announced he will close the famed monument for up to six years. In a statement today, Bishop Patrick Chaveau said a segment of the cathedral has been very weakened by the devastating fire. He did not elaborate which section he was talking about. French authorities say Monday's fire was likely an accident, possibly linked to restoration work that was being done at the time. French President Emmanuel Macron has vowed to rebuild the cathedral in five years, and there may be a reason why he may want it done sooner than later. In 2024, Paris will host the Summer Olympics. Well, the Orlando Magic were hoping to get a 2-0 series lead on the Raptors, but unfortunately, they weren't able to get it done in Toronto last night. Uh, between their shooting percentage and turnovers, overall, the Magic did not have a good game. Final score, 111 to 82. The Magic are heading back to Orlando today, though, so perhaps what they really need is some good home court advantage. Game three is Friday night right here at the Amway Center. Stayed up for that. Yes. So bummed. So bummed. All right. You saw the difference go and go. And you're like, okay, maybe maybe game two isn't going to be our game. Friday, yeah. though, lots of rain in the forecast for yes. people going to that game. Yes, yeah. but have a good feeling for yes. Friday. Yeah. It's, maybe it's like a wedding, you know, rain. Maybe, maybe, exactly. maybe good luck. Good luck. Who knows? <laughs> well, let's get a look at how the roads are doing right now. No rain out there, but traffic safety expert Trooper Steve has your pinpoint traffic brought to you by Napleton Automotive. No you rain. Know what? We don't need rain no. to cause issues. Right here. Candice, you took the words out of my mouth. We don't need sunshine. We don't need rain to cause crashes. We just need Brie Voles driving around. But she's here in the studio. She didn't cause this. This is 528 over by Dallas Boulevard. You can see a Class C wrecker right now trying to remove this semi from the lanes. This is actually a live image. This is pretty cool. All westbound lanes of 528 are currently shut down right there at Dallas Boulevard. So what are you going to do? You're going to detour yourself over to State Road 520. Take that west up towards Colonial and you can get past that. Eastbound I-4. Earlier crash at John Young Parkway has since cleared, so that ramp is now open. Drive times, though, are a little high for this time. 9.05 in the morning. 33 minutes from Osceola Parkway to Colonial. 29 if you're coming from Lake Mary. This has stayed at a solid 30 minutes for most of the morning. Good news, though. Turnpike, we're all clear. And attractions area of I-4. I-4 to include from Reunion all the way up towards 535, a little slow eastbound, but westbound looking pretty good. Ladies, back to you. All right, thank you, Trooper Steve. For nearly three years, News 6 has been pushing to drive change and toughen Florida's distracted driving laws, and today could mark a big milestone in our efforts. The final Senate committee is set to debate its bill this afternoon. It would make texting behind the wheel a primary offense, so Officers wouldn't need another reason to pull you over. If the bill passes, it goes to the Senate floor. A similar bill is also moving through the House. It could go to a full vote as early as next week. But if you've been tracking this, we've mm -hmm. been covering this since September 2016 when our own Matt Austin was rear-ended by a driver who admitted to texting while behind the wheel. Yeah, and as of February, Florida is only one of four states mm -hmm. where officers cannot pull you over if they see you looking at your phone rather than paying attention to the road. Yeah, we obviously have an extensive look at all the stories we've done uh, throughout the years on clickorlando.com slash driving change. Um, it's very eye-opening to see how many people are affected by this one mm -hmm. simple, you know, maneuver yeah. uh, during, during your driving. So, I mean, it's just something that needs to, another thing that needs to chain very mm -hmm. soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trampoline parks are extremely popular places for kids and adults to there, bounce around. Yeah, there are more than a dozen in our area, but according to a new report, thousands have been hurt at trampoline parks nationwide. At least six people have died. It's hard to believe this, yeah. but New 6 investigator Mike DeForce obtained 911 calls that reveal the types of injuries happening right here in Central Florida. 911, where is your emergency? Guys on Daytona, a little girl just popped her shoulder out of place. Can I get an ambulance, please? Central Florida is home to more than a dozen trampoline parks. While most jumpers have a fun time, 911 calls confirm participants are getting hurt, like the woman who reportedly tried to hop from one trampoline to another at Outer Limits in Orlando. Is there any serious bleeding? No, but you can see, like... A bone looks like it popped out of place. We discovered jumpers are breaking limbs, dislocating joints, and suffering head and neck injuries. A parent told her son tried to do a flip and he laid down his back. 
Uh, he said his neck cracked. Last October, a 12-year-old left Airheads Orlando in an ambulance. His eyes are rolling back. His eyes are rolling back? According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, emergency room visits caused by trampoline parks have grown from 2,500 in 2013 to nearly 18,000 in 2017. That increase may be due in part to the skyrocketing popularity of these facilities. The industry has grown steadily since 2011 uh, when we saw 40 parks worldwide. Now we have over 1,200. Bethany Evans represents the International Association of Trampoline Parks, a trade group that promotes industry-wide safety standards. You can have positive experience of parks if you just follow the rules and take some precautions with uh, safety. Last November, a child playing here at Hangar 15 in Daytona Beach tried jumping into a trampoline pit filled with foam blocks. Uh, we had an accident. Um, it sounds like a little girl fell off one of our ledges and hit her head on the way down. She just puked. Due to medical privacy laws, we do not know the identity of that four-year-old or how she's doing today. She's not bleeding, but she like um, her mother was rocking her, and she keeps telling her, don't rock me, don't rock me, it hurts. Okay, so, did she lose consciousness when she fell? She, she, she did. She basically did. Two other parents have filed lawsuits against Hangar 15, claiming their children were injured as a result of the company's negligence. Both cases ended in confidential settlements. Legal experts believe trampoline parks avoid many lawsuits by using liability waivers like this one, which reads, by signing this agreement, I am giving up my right to sue Hangar 15 for any injury. A spokesperson for Hangar 15 tells News 6 it adheres to the standards prescribed by the International Association of Trampoline Parks. The company says the safety and well-being of their visitors is their top priority. Other trampoline parks contacted by News 6 told us similar things. Mike DeForest, News 6. The International Trampoline Park Association does have some suggestions on how to make your next visit a safe one. Just look for this story on ClickOrlando.com. And you know, we have people certainly with older kids, mm -hmm. you go to those places quite a bit, lots of birthday parties there. So it really is eye-opening that maybe they aren't as safe as we thought. Yeah, and it's not just the kids. You know, lots of adults are getting hurt as well. There's a dad who is facing months of rehab after really injuring his knees. Uh, when jumping into a foam pit at the Get Air Trampoline Park near Chicago. Yeah, well, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are kind of pushing to regulate trampoline parks and um, mounting concerns over the risks. But like you were saying, sometimes, you know, if the kids are all having a birthday party, you kind of yes. have to go. It's mm -hmm. That's where all the other kids are going. So it's also talking to your kids on how to be safe around those things, too. Yes, important conversation. Yes. Painting is a relaxing hobby for a lot of artists. It allows you to focus on an image and nothing else. And for one 95-year-old man, his work is attracting the attention of all generations. There's not much else I can do. I, I don't chase pretty ladies. Oh my gosh, he's the sweetest. But what <laughs> he can do with a brush and some paint is really remarkable. His story is coming up next. You're watching News 6, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by the Orlando Solar Bears. Yes, tonight. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, Meteorologist Candace Campos and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. A local artist has not only been painting for more than 70 years, he's still being featured in art galleries. Now at 95 years old, you may have seen his work around Central Florida or even in other states. His most recent exhibits at the Mills Gallery in Orlando. News 6 at 9's Carolina Cardona met him at his home in New Smyrna Beach and tells us why he titles this one, Burn This Down, Reflections on the Art World. It's the stroke of a brush. It lets me know I'm alive. I have something to show for it. That Harold Gard says keeps him active. I mean, that's why I work bigger now, because I need to have a bigger statement about living. At 95, Gard paints every day, a career he began more than seven decades ago after he served for the U.S. Air Force during World War II. One of the ways that happened with the GI Bill is that the universities, to take advantage of the students and the veterans started making art programs so they can get the tuition and, and, and teach art. He's an abstract expressionist artist who also invented the Strapo technique, a combination of painting with printmaking. Currently his work can be seen at the gallery in Mills Park, Orlando, titled Burn This Down, 
reflections on the art world. Art, in my time, you never expected to be selling anything with no part of it. So art is being judged all by its price and not by its intellectual value. He is an artist that paints exclusively for himself. He doesn't paint to satisfy an audience or to try to achieve the critic's heart. Gallery owner Boris Garb says, Harold tells it like it is, with no filter, something today's generation seems to appreciate it more. Young people love the idea that this older man that's 95 is so angry and so upset with how things are going in the world right now, the inequalities, the injustice. I wanted to be an experience of one individual, me, to another individual who I may not even know. But I would like it to say, this is something worth looking at. This is something where I can learn more about who I am than trying to figure out what do the artists want me to see. Most of his paintings are of human figures and structural shapes, like chairs, vases. If you start looking at it, mm -hmm. and start looking at this, and you begin to get an emotional response. Many have sequence of numbers. You will see uh, the number three in Harold's paintings a lot. One, two, three. This could be about the middle age, you know, the, uh, a young person, a middle-aged person, an older person. You, you can interpret it any way you want. An artist with a sense of humor. But there's not much else I can do. I, I don't chase pretty ladies. Who never thought his work would come this far. I never expected to be this old. Carolina Cardona, News 6 at 9. That's a good issue. I never expected to be yeah. this old. And if you'd like to check out the exhibit, it runs through May 5th and the gallery is open six days a week. And it really just goes to show when you stay active and you mm -hmm. have things that interest you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's keeping him young. That is 95. the key, right? Yeah. And he looks great and he's moving great. And uh, he, uh, his major bodies of work in painting, drawing, and prints reveal his early and kind of vigorous engagement with abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, it's just cool to see something that's just different, you know? And, and he has 70 years of experience in painting to kind of show that, that, that mm -hmm. difference, which is yes. so great. Yeah. All right, let's talk about your meme of the day. It's that time of the day. Excited for spring? LOL. Me too, bro. Uh, <laughs> you know what those are. Pesky things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think love bug season's just around the corner. Yeah, that's coming soon, right? I'm, so. I'm starting to see them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's check out this. It's a flower in Cocoa Beach from our photojournalist, Goose Goslin. Well, that is a beautiful shot. And we are going to be seeing another really nice day today. But we do need a little rain in the forecast to help those flowers grow. Unfortunately, our next batch of rain will come with a severe threat. You can see over here on my screen here, all that yellow shading here from northern and central Florida at slight risk is going to be in effect after 2 p.m. on Friday. So make your plans accordingly. Outdoor plans Friday afternoon is going to be a no-go. Right now, though, beautiful day. Get out there. Enjoy it. 72 degrees in Sanford, 73 in Orlando. We're at 71 out in Leesburg. Taking here hour by hour, a little warmer than yesterday, up to 86 degrees. Warm and dry, though. Mostly dry conditions, but you can see rain chances do go up considerably on Friday afternoon. Good Friday. Uh, sundown, Passover begins, so if you have any plans outdoors, make sure to have a plan B, especially if you are doing dinner outside. And then as we continue into Easter on Sunday, near 80 degrees near to just below average for a really beautiful weekend is on tap. We just have to get through some really dicey weather on Friday. We'll continue to keep our eyes on the latest models to see how strong to severe those storms will be. We'll have the latest models uh, throughout the noon cast as well. All right, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Tonight, the hit CBS show, The Amazing Race, is back. Yes, this time, house guests and castaways are on their marks as the first reality showdown kicks off the new season. Welcome to the start of a very special, amazing race. Yeah! 11 fan favorite teams from Celebrity Big Brother, Survivor, and past seasons of The Amazing Race are competing all for a million dollars as they run a 25,000 mile race around the world. Sounds exciting. The Amazing Race leaves the starting gate tonight right here on News 6. I love The Amazing yeah. Race. Yes, that is an intense experience. <sighs> Our friend Erica Dunlap yeah. from America 2004, yeah. she was on it in 2009 and she came in third. She and her 
husband at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, the thing about it, you just, you get to go so many great places, but you don't have time to take it all in. Yeah, right. she said it was pretty stressful. Yeah. <laughs> I always have that conversation between my husband and I, yeah. like, would, would we make it? Could would you we do make it? it through this? I don't think so. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> A lot of stress, yeah. Well, good filmmaking requires attention to detail and editing correctly for the story. A group of students from our area just won a prestigious award. I always tell the kids, I'm like, you can do this, you can make it. C-SPAN is an obtainable award. These teens put together a project showing the importance of journalism, especially today. They're getting results in our schools coming up. See you guys next time. Interesting question here. <laughs> yes. Have you ever dreamt of being a mermaid? Yes. Maybe. Yeah, yes. maybe still dreaming. Now might be your chance. Yeah, especially when you come out of the water on the rock. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I know I have. Uh, Wikiwachi Spring State Park is holding auditions this week for anyone interested in being one of their famous, world famous mermaids. Since it may be too late for us to get our shot at being one of these beautiful <laughs> creatures, ClickOrlando.com's Brina Voles is here to explain how you can try out for yours. Just maybe, Julie. It's never too late. Being a mermaid sounds like a breeze. Right? I mean, here they hang out underwater all day with their colorful tails and luscious hair and make 12 bucks an hour. It's goals. But I'm here to tell you being a mermaid is actually really hard work and this is not an easy job to get. Wikiwachi Springs is holding the auditions Friday at 5 p.m. and the state park says there's a lot to them. For starters, you have to complete an endurance swim test before even moving on to the underwater part. So with that being said, you'll want to pack your swimsuit and a towel and be prepared to spend at least one to two hours there. But before you can even show up for your big tryout, there are a few things that you're gonna need to submit beforehand. Park officials are asking anyone interested in the mermaid gig to send their resume, a headshot, and a state employment application to www.mermaids1947 at gmail.com. If you don't, you won't be able to audition Friday. The park says walk-ups will not be accepted. And of course, you have to be 18 or older to even be considered for the job. So if you think you qualify or you know anyone who might, head over to clickorlando.com. And then if you scroll down here in the story, you'll find that email address to send all your info and the link to download that application. So good luck to anyone trying out this week. And if you guys catch me trying on a tail in the green room, <laughs> green room later, just uh, carry on. Don't think too much. Oh, boy. You'd be a perfect mermaid. Thank you. To I think yeah. those tails. I, <laughs> I mean, but they are so beautiful. I don't know how mm -hmm. they keep their hair so nice underwater. Yeah, yeah that uh, you have to have a lot of endurance for yeah. that job. Look like a wet dog if that happens. All right. Out of more than 6,000 students nationwide, three Winter Park students won a very big award. Their documentary about the importance of a free press took top honors in the High School East Division of C-SPAN student cam competition. We went to Winter Park High School to learn what inspires these young filmmakers and how they are getting results in our schools. Out of nearly 3,000 entries nationwide, Comfortably Numb, honoring America's right to a free press, took first prize and fan favorite in C-SPAN's student cam competition. This competition keeps on getting harder and harder every year, and the fact that uh, Winter Park High School is in the top of the top in the entire country when it comes to this competition, it's just really a pleasure always to come back and to celebrate them. Joel Bacon from C-SPAN says the competition encourages critical thinking about problems facing our country. When we start this project, there's a lot of hemming and hawing in the beginning because it's not an easy project at all. And then at that very end, I always tell the kids, I'm like, you can do this, you can make it. C-SPAN is an obtainable award, and um, today is proof of that. The three Winter Park High School students focused on the current state of journalism. Journalists are really under fire for a variety of things, and we kind of just wanted to clear that up for the focus on how journalism has kind of been taken for granted recently and how we're not really focusing on the hard work that journalists do and how important it is for our country to thrive. For Ella Grace Rodriguez, her love of journalism began in 2012 when she met New 6 anchor Lisa Bell. And I just completely fell in love with her anchoring skills and everything and I thought it was very cool and something that I considered maybe doing in the future, which is why I'm here now um, with my C-SPAN award. Very cool. And these students also use C-SPAN's video library to produce their projects. That library has about 250,000 hours of video. And Ella Grace, mm. who we heard from, she had a picture of her on her oh. phone <laughs> with Lisa Bell when they met when she was like nine years old. So Lisa, inspiring people. That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. I have pictures of, of meteorologists that I, right. you know, I've met yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it kind of gives you that spark and go, you know what? I think that's something I can yes. do. So. 
It won't be the last time we see her, that's for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we always look forward to Wednesdays on News 6. Our friend CJ from Mix 105.1 stops by. And that means we get to talk about what's trending in the news and online. Many people around the world saddened over the Notre Dame Cathedral fire, but now celebrities and billionaires are stepping up when help is needed most. How one couple is getting results coming up. Come today. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 9. It is time to talk entertainment on News 6 at 9, and that means it's time to mix it up. Why don't we just have that play the whole time while we talk to CJ yeah, from Mix 105.1 Smooth and jazz. Happy Wednesday, CJ. I want that just to follow me around. Every <laughs> room I enter, shopping. I just yeah. want that to play. Yeah, yeah. your theme music exactly. has to follow you. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve shopping. that. Tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick. You know, and we have so much to get to today. A bit of good news here, mm -hmm. especially with the sadness behind the story of Notre Dame and that horrible fire. A French billionaire and his family are pledging to really help rebuild the cathedral. So it's interesting because um, Salma Hayek and her husband, Francois-Henri Pinault, Ooh, I probably didn't nice. say that right, oh, but I think you did. I'm going to say that I tried. Um, they, as soon as it happened, he, and he came out and said, you know, my father and I, we're going to pledge, you know, 100 million euros, which is $113 million Whoa. to the reconstruction Big of chunk. Notre Dame. Well, then all of a sudden, billionaires from all over the world started donating. So there's millions and millions of dollars that are going to be uh, going towards the reconstruction of Notre Dame. Is that them right there? Yeah, no. and so, you know, for, for, he's he's like the president of uh, Caring, which I thought when I read it was Keurig. I was like, ooh, coffee. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's totally no, no. different. Uh, Caring is like, uh, they own a bunch a bunch of luxury brands. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, you know, they have a house in Paris. Obviously, you know, they're French, or he's French, and um, there's a lot of connection there for him, and a lot of people, too. And so, mm -hmm. one of the things that I saw as soon as it happened is I went on social media and I saw people posting their photos, and I kind of, mm -hmm. in the beginning, was mm -hmm. like, it's not about you. Exactly. Then I thought about yeah. it though, and I was like, something like Notre Dame is a personal experience because oh, yeah. it is such a religious place. Mm -hmm. It is such a personal uh, journey that you go on when you go there. So that's exactly what should be happening. And people are talking about it. And yeah. It's going to get rebuilt now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did tie the knot less than a mile from the cathedral back yep. in 2009. So like that's what you're saying. It kind of ties into yes. many people's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Next up, we are royal baby crazed mm -hmm. over yeah. here. Oh, I am Lord. ready to scrub in as Meghan Markle's yes. doula. <laughs> and so of They're course teasing we, us too. I know. Mm -hmm. Of course we know her as the Duchess of Sussex. And now the Queen of Fashion is giving her praise for her pregnancy mm -hmm. style. No, so it's, it's interesting. I, I always think about, you know, pregnancy. And I'm like, oh, just be comfortable because that looks so yes. uncomfortable. Comfortable right. carrying yes, around this like just <laughs> melon, melon. Right. yeah. But um, so basically, Anna Winter from uh, editor in chief of Vogue magazine was like, you know, her fashion has been on point. She's like, I think every time I see her, her heels just get higher and higher and higher. <laughs> now that may not be by choice, you know, because obviously being a royal, there's a lot of guidelines mm -hmm. you have to abide by. Um, but to have Anna Winter, you know, Winter say that this is, you know, you are just what fashion pregnancy goals. Mm -hmm. Um, is remarkable. She also said that she wishes more women would continue to dress their personality mm -hmm. and their style when they're pregnant and celebrate being pregnant mm -hmm. and don't hide it with, you know, these really comfortable clothes. And I'm like, well... I think you just do <laughs> whatever suits yeah. you, you know? And yeah. she's a fashion icon. And, you know, we haven't typically seen a lot of royals embracing that style that really shows their bump. So it is nice to see mm -hmm. that because it's a very modern look and Megan is known to be a style icon. So yeah. we love it. But those heels when you're pregnant, I'm Ooh. telling you, I did that and now my feet have never been the same, so <laughs> that's my word of caution because I'm sure she's watching online yeah, yeah. right now. You just do what you can do. Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I, honestly, I would probably just be in like a, a moo moo the entire time because yeah. I just, I, you just want to be comfortable. Fuzzy yes. slippers. I remember one of the first uh, things uh, Julie told me when I was pregnant. She goes, you know what, for the next nine months, don't suck it in. Just let it all hang Right, it's out. the only time in your life. Do it. Yeah. Well, and you know, another way that we're celebrating here locally is mm -hmm. uh, Mix 105.1, we're throwing a royal baby shower. Ooh, it's actually wow. a donation drive. Yeah, so if you have um, like baby goods, uh, things for new moms, um, come donate it. I got a ton it. of stuff in my car right now. Well, <laughs> bring it, bring it to the radio it station. Okay. We are accepting donations. I'm just going to give it to you. You take it today. Uh, hey, let's, buy, let's go right after Do the it. show. Right. But we're going to donate these to um, Harbor House. And oh, so, wonderful. you know, Perfect. this is going to go on until the royal baby arrives. So all the info's at mix1051.com. That is great. I love that. All right, let's talk a little bit of speed. Hagrid's magical 
uh, Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Oh. It's a mouthful. Huffman's it, saying it, that. <laughs> it opens up in June, and Universal Orlando is announcing new details every single day this week. So, I mean, there's a lot of excitement going on behind this There's motorbike. a three-headed dog. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, um, those of us that have seen the films. Uh, <laughs> I was, see those eyes. I think that was some shade. <laughs> yes. Uh, Fluffy, uh, the three-headed dog, was announced on Monday. A lot of fans pretty much anticipated this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the first iconic, magical creatures we met in the Harry Potter franchise. Um, so, uh, Fluffy's going to be there. Uh, yesterday, they actually announced... They um, look very fluffy. fluffy. Well, it's kind of ironic. Oh, okay. You know? okay. He's, he's a dog. He's still fluffy. Okay. Um, and then yesterday they announced the Cornish Pixies are going to be a Those part of it. Those are trouble. They are. Uh, I think it was in mm. Chamber of Secrets. Neville Longbottom's character was pulled by the ears and hung on a chandelier. And he was just kind of dangling there like, oh, oh what's going on? And then today they're also, they teased, um, it looks like Devil's Snare. Which if you've seen the films, you know that, you know, you kind of have to relax and fall through. So it's kind of maybe something that's going to be an interesting twist wow. in this ride. I know you're excited about that. Can you tell? Just a little bit. <laughs> and so on Friday, you always help out one of CJ's listeners. I do. Last week, we um, we helped out mom. Yeah. She uh, it was, we had a birthday party and then dyed Easter eggs. Yes. And it was hot, but she loved it. Good. So maybe you've got an event or something coming up, obviously Easter this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want a personalized pinpoint accurate forecast, uh, just hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Mix1051. And then... Uh, I'll commission Candace to come over and uh, give you that personalized, pinpoint accurate forecast. You know if it's going to be a beautiful Easter or not. Yeah, exactly. well, and if you do tell us about your Easter party, you know we're, we're going to show up, too. Yeah, I want to do the so egg hunt. Yeah. I love an egg hunt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although Troy kids. always comments about the hard-boiled eggs out in the sun. Yeah. Every year he's like, oh. You do the plastic eggs yeah, and you, you put candy plastic. in them. Right, but not chocolate because that'll melt. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You grew maybe, up in Florida. You've got it down. Maybe this year. It might be cold this year. Oh. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> like, what a that tease. A tease. <laughs> All right, CJ, thank you. We See love you next seeing week. you. Yes. All right. It seems like the older a student gets, the bigger the homework load. And it's stressful. Whether it's a project, an essay, a math problem, it really adds up. You can always turn to a tutor, but sometimes that's not even enough. Up next, we'll talk with a licensed mental health therapist about why parents may want to consider a homework therapist. Hmm, interesting. You're watching News 6 getting results for all of Central Florida on air and on our free News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival. Can fly. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. We're starting something new here on News 6 at 9, Ask a Doctor. We're looking at topics that may be difficult to ask your health care pr provider about or that may have some debate going on about them. And morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor is here now to ask a doctor about homework therapist Kirsten. So mental health is a very important topic that right. we've looked at in a variety of ways here at News 6, including anxiety, and that can definitely present itself in childhood for younger people, sometimes over everyday experiences like homework. So we have brought in Susie Raskin, who yes. is a licensed mental health therapist with Orlando Health. She works with teenagers every single yes. day in our high schools <laughs> and middle schools. So you're a wonderful and qualified candidate to talk about this. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. So homework therapist. Mm -hmm. and. Some people are paying $200 to $600 right. to have one of these people come in and talk with their kids, but they're not actually therapists. Well, so what it appears to be is that this is kind of a new and emerging thing that we've got going on. So there aren't exactly checks and balances in place as far as what makes a homework therapist a homework therapist. And yes, it does come with quite a hefty price tag. And is it a good investment? Well, I guess that it depends on the family and it depends on the kid and it depends on their needs, right? I mean, if you're a family with the means and the ability to find someone that uh, has all these qualifications and it helps your child, well, then by all means, if it's going to be beneficial for the family, why not? I wonder, though, you know, if they should just be seeing a normal therapist and that's what parents should be seeking out. Well, I, of course, I'm always going to advocate for therapy, <laughs> but um, I think that there is something to be said for, you know, the academic lives of kids these days. They do balance a lot with school. They do end up having a lot of stress and anxiety as a result of it. So what's cool about this whole homework therapy thing is that people have found a way to bring both of those services together and offer them at the same time. So that is a beneficial thing. Yeah, it's like a BOGO deal. Kind of, you, yeah. You're right. getting your homework done, but you're also 
also making sure that the emotional needs are met of your child. Exactly. And it's all happening in the same hour, two hours, right? possibly bi-weekly. Um, so some people are going to look at this and think, okay, 200 to $600 for a kid who says he has problems, is this just a coddled child? Well, I suppose, again, it just depends on, you know, the family's ability um, to meet their needs of the, of the kid. But is it necessary for everybody? Not necessarily. There are other things that parents can do um, to help their child with anxiety and with academic issues. So um, is it attainable for everybody? Not necessarily. Um, so there are other options as well. Let's talk about some of those. We have them on the screen right now if you're watching from home. So Susie, you establish your homework routine. That's what a right. lot of parents do, right? Exactly. And yes, that's kind of a tried and true suggestion, right? You know, make it normal at home so that this is like the regular time of the day when we all sit down and we get what we need to do done. All right, and then, I mean, you can stray from that a little bit. Of course. I'm sure there are issues with after-school activities or right. getting the practices, but right. being organized is important, and I think that's one of the things that keeps drawing people back to these homework therapists is the treating this as an organizational tool. Right, and I think that there is a lot of help from a homework therapist in that way. You know, kids aren't necessarily born knowing how to get organized and stay organized, and they have a lot on their load as far as getting things done. So helping them learn how to use a planner or, you know, prioritize what they need to get done are things that can go a long way. It sounds simple, but it really does help. Now, some people are blaming this on what are called helicopter parents. Right. Um, parents who aren't necessarily able to give their child the break to do things on their own independently. Would you say that this is a helicopter parent um, strategy? Well, again, I mean, if, if a family is in a position to find someone that can assist with it and it really does help their kid, then by all means, parents got to do what they got to do to help their kids succeed. Um, definitely different parenting styles out there, that's for sure, yeah. And but that can you, play a part. But you also help kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, while they're at school. What are some of the things that you've helped kids do to ease their anxiety? So a lot of the things that we do at, at Teen Express is that we try to, first of all, normalize their feelings. It is normal to feel worried and stressed about school and other things as well. And then teach them stress management techniques, coping skills, strategies, ways to help calm themselves down, um, ways to stay organized, ways to stay on top of things and to prioritize what needs to get done. And we have done so many stories with Susie Raskin. She's a fantastic resource. We will point everyone to clickorlando.com to continue to look at those. We appreciate your advice you. on this homework therapy thing. We'll look back at it, I'm sure. I'll send it back to you ladies at the desk for now. All Thanks. right, Kirsten, thank you. That is great advice. I know homework can be a struggle in my house sometimes mm -hmm. too. But look at this, so pretty from our beach cam, lots of blue sky. It really is a nice day out there today. Yes, and the damage from some tornadoes in Texas is still being assessed, Candace. Oh yeah, here in the U.S., an outbreak of tornadoes and several thunderstorms have killed at least nine people. And at least 26 tornadoes were confirmed in six states from Texas, all the way through Delaware, and that includes in this tiny town of Alto, Texas, where two twisters hit leveling homes. We're told people did have warnings on social media, their phones and TV, all very good sources, but there were no sirens in that area out there. And then storms in the Lake Cumberland State Resort Park out in Kentucky caused this tree to fall on this cabin. You can see the cabin was completely knocked off its foundation, uh, nearly onto its just Oh, sideways right there. A family of six were actually inside when it happened, but luckily there were no injuries. Just some, I mean, some minor injuries, but no major injuries to report, which is, which is a miracle when you see pictures like this. You can see the little baby toys out there. In California, though, they're excited. They're getting more snow. Hang 10 or whatever you say when you ski. That's because it's good news for skiers out to enjoy the slopes. I mean, we're talking, you know, almost end of April and fresh powder is falling out there. Looks like a good time. That is your weather around the world. Now let's pinpoint Central Florida a little closer home. A pretty good time when it comes to our weather here in Central Florida for today. No snow, but we have some sand you can enjoy out there. Gotha, you can see temperatures for today are up to 84 degrees, just kind of like how it was yesterday, a little warmer uh, than recent than recent days. Partly sunny skies, temperatures by 6, only cooling down to about 83 degrees. So really nice day out there. Maybe even taking dinner outside will be a nice night. And then out in Glencoe, temperatures along the coastline are slightly cooler because of that onshore breeze, 79 degrees by 4 p.m. By lunchtime, your temperature about 76, also looking mostly dry and we will stay mostly dry today and tomorrow and then a big change in your forecast 
for your Friday. All right, now let's check on your personalized pinpoint weather forecast. And we are talking about Orlando City. That is this Saturday. Um, temperatures by kickoff will be about 74 degrees at 3 p.m. We will be staying in the low 70s. A very, very nice Saturday will be on tap if you have any outdoor plans, like a soccer game. Uh, just do be aware that to get this nice weather, we do have to get through some rough weather on Friday. Now, if you have a special event or a day you'd like me to pinpoint for, send us your photos or videos along with your city, your date, your name, and why it's a special occasion. Just head on over to clickorlando.com slash personalized pinpoint to submit them. And we have a lot of holidays, lots of events coming up. Unfortunately, it looks like Good Friday is not going to be uh, a nice afternoon. Temperatures are going to be staying in the mid 80s. Rain coverage up to 80% strong. Two severe storms will be possible. That will be a day you really want to make sure you have your pinpoint weather yes. app handy. Mm -hmm. We'll be sending out those notifications the moment we get them in. All right. Well, getting results as a first responder is based on building trust in the community. And every week we like to highlight all their good deeds. They're humanizing the badge and safety is a top priority for law enforcement. Which is why one local agency thought it's a good time to brush up on everyone's knowledge. It's a story from our Good News Roundup coming up. You're watching News 6. Getting results will be right back. Your personalized pinpoint weather is brought to you by J.A. Edwards of America, your roofing specialist. They call attorney Dan Newland. Police here in Volusia County were discovering that a lot of the kids who were getting into trouble did not have high school degrees. So police went to the schools and said, how can we get crime results together? I'm Eric Von Ank, and today at 5, you're going to hear stories from some of these kids who are getting results that are emotional and are going to make you cry. Truly, that's today at 5. Looking mm. forward to that. Well, it is Wednesday. We want an easy dinner. It's kind of that hump right there in the middle of the yep. week. That will make a great lunch for Thursday. Mm -hmm. We always like those two first. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. getting results for dinner tonight with steak salad with goat cheese and cranberries. That sounds good. The Mama Loves Food blog says salads are a great meal when you're on the go. Plus, this one is protein packed. She says you can use a less expensive steak to save money because you'll be slicing it so thin. You won't need to worry about it being tough. You can find the full recipe wow. on clickorlando.com under the food section that looks delicious mm. and I learned a nice little tidbit you put your dressing at the bottom of your container oh, yes. and that way when you shake it it's ah. not Julie taught me that yeah yeah my mason jar salads learning that, stuff all that the time in the, in the green room anyway. refrigerator yeah <laughs> all right we always love to get a little bit of good news into the show and that includes our first responders they're always out in the community getting results for those in need so trooper Steve is here to share some of his favorite stories of the week with us what you got Steve well as a law enforcement officer always talking about safety the Flagler County Sheriff Sheriff's Office is serious about that message, so they held their first ever safety expo. Check this out. They posted a ton of great photos with more than 1,000 neighbors that stopped by to learn about safety. Kids also got their fingerprints done. And check out all kinds of different emergency vehicles out there. Deputies also got to play a lot of games with kids like tug of war and giant checkers. That's always fun. FWC came out too and brought a little gator and other animals. And of course, can't forget those goodest canines out there also. It looks like everyone had a great time. I love seeing that stuff. Over in Ormond Beach now, this is such a cute photo. Ormond Beach PD posted this one. They say Officer Culver was on patrol in this little boy's apartment complex, and of course, he had to run out to show Officer Culver his police gear and get a photo <laughs> with him. Maybe he's got a career in law enforcement coming up here soon in the future. We've seen a few of these lately, guys. Lots of turtles trying to cross the road oh. and lots of concerned neighbors and officers helping them along the way. This is Officer Ger... Girardi, 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 Girardi from Winter Park. Sorry, sir. He named <laughs> this little guy Teddy the Turtle. Thanks for helping him across the road there. Out in Lake County, deputies are getting results with inmates. They've partnered with uh, Habitat for Humanity of Lake Sumter to build homes for those who really need them. These photos are from the first day of the Inmate Construction Academy. Inmates worked side by side with Bay to Bay Concrete, learning how to form a slab. They are excited about this project to share their journey through the construction. They say they can't wait to, you know, turn over this home for somebody who really absolutely deserves it. And down in St. Cloud, my neck of the Woods, firefighters answered the call Aww. when five kittens got stuck down in a storm drain. Luckily, all five of those kittens were rescued and taken. I wonder how many firefighters took kittens home. 
you know, I'm pretty sure those are all sitting at a firefighter house at this point. <laughs> exactly. Right now. Lucky kittens. Yep, yep. All right. Thanks for joining us this morning on News 6 at 9. And we'll have more news and weather for you coming up right here at noon. We always break news on ClickOrlando.com. Rachel Ray is next. Get out there. Have a wonderful day before the storms roll in. 